copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 264, regarding a robbery at the Federal Reserve Bank. Assist the officers. That's all. Roll. <laughs> nowadays to safeguard the food you eat. Rio Grande is just as particular about the health of your automobile. I believe you'll agree that we'd be very foolish indeed if after all the painstaking care and engineering genius employed in making this pure 100% keratin-based motor oil, we sold it in bulk, thus allowing dust and grit to get into it, sent into your motor and eventually playing havoc with its delicate mechanism. No real loop must reach the prime state of your motor as pure, clean, strong, and positively undiluted as when it leaves the refinery. And it does. Thanks to the hermetically sealed tamper-proof can in which this great lubricant is exclusively sold. Because of this precaution, we can guarantee that real loop does not, cannot break down under the most intense heat of your motor at its highest speed. That real loop, smooth, rapid flow to every part of your motor cannot be slowed up even by zero weather. Everyone should have this maximum all-weather protection that costs only a quarter of a quart. Get it tomorrow morning when you drive in for that tank full of real brand cracks, the gasoline that meets every emergency with real police car performance. confidential files of the Los Angeles Police Department. Therefore, Chief of Police Davidson has asked Captain Russell Smith of the robbery detail to open our program. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Occasionally, the work of the law enforcement officer becomes very amusing in retrospect. Tonight's story is such a case. Although the work at the time was most serious, in looking back on it, the officers concerned were more amused than startled by the bizarre outcome. In spite of the fact that a crime had been committed, the circumstances were such that it partook of the nature of burlesque. The seeming unintelligence of the criminal turned out to be, however, a very carefully assumed condition. But it was a condition that made the work of the officers extremely hard. I will tell you more of the story at the end of the program. At ten minutes past eight on the night of Friday, November 4th, 1926, three members of the Los Angeles Police Department, Lieutenant Hotley, and Detectives Tom O'Brien and Bud Curtis, were being ushered into an office of a bank at 2nd and Spring Street. Mrs. Smith, is your gentleman a policeman, a powerful answer to see you all? Oh, good evening, gentlemen. I'm sorry I couldn't admit you sick. I've got a problem on my hands. The books just won't balance. Are you the manager of this branch, Ray? Oh, dear, no, I wouldn't think of exciting a manager over such a small matter. You see, there's only $74,000 missing. Only $74,000 stolen, and there's nothing to get excited about. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I didn't say it was stolen. We just can't find it, and I've been checking the books all day to see if there had been a counting error. But I can't find that either. Uh, do you mind if I ask what you called the police for if you didn't think it had been stolen? But the idea of anyone stealing from the Federal Reserve Bank was preposterous. I called it because I just didn't know what else to do. Oh, dear. Bud. Yeah. Uh, go bring that colored janitor back here. All right. Now, look, Mr. Smith. You had $74,000. Now, you don't have it. Let's play a little game and pretend it was stolen. Well, this was really very serious. But I don't see how it could possibly have been uh, Why don't you just tell us all about it, eh? We're not bookkeepers, but we can put two and two together, and lots of times we get the right answer. Well, yesterday at closing time, we took $370,000 in gold certificates into the vault plus. $375,000. There was one bundle of uh, $74,000 that had been set aside as a deemed damaged currency. Yeah. Uh-huh. But it was put on the truck and wheeled into the vault with the rest of the money. When the truck was brought out this morning, it wasn't better. I see. 
It's the strangest thing. I've been checking and checking all the live long day, and I'm just stumped. You're stumped? <laughs> You're given a time to get halfway across the country. And I suppose you'll think we're inefficient if we don't go lay our hands right on the crook. Crook? How can you say such a thing? Now, let's get down to business. Now, how many volts clerks were there? Two. I thought you might want to talk to them. I'll go get them for you. Oh. What do you make of it, Tom? It's an inside job. It's got to be. But I almost wish it wasn't because it's going to be plenty tough. Yeah. All these federal places seem to think an employee would be stuck dead if he looked cross out of a dollar bill. Hey, uh, you stick around, Wes. We want to talk to you. Yeah, uh, sir. This is a vault, sir. They've all been here over ten years. That's from a ring Uh, what's your name? John Reynolds. And this is Frank Parsons. Mm-hmm. Uh, he came to my home for dinner and stayed all evening. And I drove him to his home. And I drove back to my home. We didn't know anything about the shortage until we came to work this morning. This morning. We'll check up on that later. Who else had access to the vault? Nobody. Uh, who might have gotten in there after you took the truck with the money on it in there? No one came in there. You locked the vault shortly after 4.30 and left. Who saw you take the truck in there? Any number of employees. I couldn't say who they were. Did uh, anyone come near the truck as you were wheeling it in? No. Why should they? Why should they? Listen, Mr. Ahmed. Well, you don't yeah. understand. All of our people are completely trustworthy. They have to have the best of recommendations before we hire them. Yeah, we know all about that, but... Uh, what have you got this janitor here for? Well, he was probably nearest to the truck. He was sweeping the floor. So I asked him to stay tonight until you got here. All right. Did he come near the truck or didn't he? No. No one came near it. Okay, that's the way it is. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You two vault clerks were the last ones who saw that bundle of money. I'm going to give you just three minutes to think of some tangible clue to its disappearance. If you can't tell me more than you have, I'm going to take you in. Oh, but you can't do that. I can't find the book on what you've told me either, but I'll do it just the same. Uh, hey, where are you going? Uh, you all mean me, sir. Yes, you. Well, I've got some cleaning up to do. Well, you stay right here. We've got some cleaning up to do, too. Yeah, I do. Take you've done some fast thinking. Are you ready to talk? Well, I don't like to say anything that might sound as though we were putting the blame on somebody else to protect ourselves. Don't worry about that, Andrew. Just fill it. Well, I was talking to one of the guards today, and he said he saw Wes, the janitor here, taking his overalls home with him. They were rolled up in a bundle. Is that right, Wes? Yeah. Oh, don't tell me now. Let me go. You were taking him home to have him wash, weren't you? You'll have to give us something better than that, boy. You can see he has clean overalls on. And you said yourself he didn't come near the truck. The only other thing I can tell you is Wes told the guard he was quitting his job Monday. Well, well, now that is something. Say, with $74,000, he'd either tell his feet to get going or be smart enough to stay around for a few months. He wouldn't quit on Monday. Why are you quitting on Monday, Wes? Did you come into an inheritance? You come into a... inheritance? In, 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 Why are you leaving this job? Have you got another one? Yeah. Where are you going to work? Well, let me see. I don't exactly know. Oh, uh, I see. You mean you're going to work for someone else, but you haven't decided who it's going to be yet, huh? I can't figure things out powerful like that. Well, he's not what you might call brilliant, but he seems to have the highest recommendation. I looked up his application today. I can tell you anything you want to know about him. Including the fact that he didn't take the dough. Is he married? No, uh, I don't suppose it would do any good to ask Wes. He probably wouldn't know offhand. Well, of course, I uh, I remember. He, yes, he's married and lives at the, the Evening Star Apartments on Central Avenue. Hmm. Evening Star Apartments. I'll tell you what we'll do, Mr. West. <clears throat> Let you and I take a little ride out to your house. I uh, want to meet the family and all that sort of thing. Uh-huh. Sure, sure. We'll just take pop luck. I don't know how you all could do that. And my wife, she's awful fussy about who I bring around. Mm. But if she's out tonight, anyhow. Oh, that's all right. I'll even help you crawl in the window. She has you locked up. Let's go. But Miss Oliver, she ain't, uh, I ain't got a wife. Why, Mr. West, do you mean an employee has so misrepresented his status? And in the evening star apartment? Well, I don't live out there. I just said I had a wife because I thought uh, I'd have more chance of getting a job if I had a wife. 
You think uh, I'd be more of a responsible man? Well, I think you're a responsible man, Wes. So we're going for a little ride. Just be- because I think you're responsible for $74,000. Sure. Now, look, Wes. We'll be at your house in a few minutes. We'll get the money and everything will be cleared up except one thing. Why did you steal it? Uh, I don't know, Dalton. I didn't steal nothing, no. Listen, Wes, we know how to do this. We're sweeping the floor as a truck went by. The first one looking at the package off the truck, they wrapped it up in the overalls and brought it home. Now, why'd you steal it? Uh, I wouldn't steal nothing, no. I ain't that kind of a bell. What does your wife think about you having all that money? Well, she don't think nothing about anything, because I ain't got a wife. Does she know you haven't got a wife? Place ought to be in this block, Parker. Yeah, it's quite a neighborhood, isn't it? Hey, what are you stopping here for? It's a big lot. What? Hey, are you sure this is the place? This is the address you gave us. All right, now come on, Mr. West. Just tell us where you really live. We have all evening and lots of, lots of gasoline. Well, I don't live no place here. I just sleep in empty houses and places like that. Oh, come on, let's lock him up and find out where he lives tomorrow. Just get him an up. I'm going to get this cleared up tonight. Now, for the last time, West, where do you live? A place on 16th Street. I can't remember the number. I'll tell you all when we get there, though. Let's go, officer. We got another clue. Hey, this looks like an empty house. Of course it's an empty house. Mr. West lives here. Well, I'll be. Listen, West. I'm getting sick and tired of your stolen. It isn't going to get you any place. It's getting us someplace all over Los Angeles. Now, are you going to tell us where you live around here? Well, I move a powerful lot to you. You all got me so excited. I was all mixed up. Oh, you shouldn't drive so fast, Audrey. You've got me to wet all excited. Well, let everybody be real calm. <laughs> Try to think of something soothing, West, like a, like a piece of watermelon. Yeah. Now, look, where do you live? I reckon it's over yonder on 24th Street. You reckon that's really the place? It's a little hard to stop it, Hartree. We've got another reckoning. <laughs> but try as he would, or wouldn't, West could not remember exactly where he lived. He led the officers all over the southwestern part of Los Angeles. Finally, their patients and gathering exhausted, they came to a halt on a dusty side of the street. Stop the motor, Arthur. Let's get up and sit the lady. You stay in the car, Wes. Yeah. Rest that imagination of yours, because it's really going to get a working over. Yeah. I still say we should have thrown him in a can. Personally, I'd like to make his memory wake up with a good spoken of snoo. I mean, too, he's making muggies out of it. That's just what we're going to do. Hey, wait a minute. It can't be. That is illegal. Arthur's right. It's not legal. Much as I'd like to get around Mr. West and the technicality, it still would be against the law. Oh, wait a minute, you guys. Of course, we aren't really going to harm our forgetful friend, but there's no law that says we can't think about it, is there? Yes, there is. I've broken a study. And there's no law that says we can't speak our thoughts out loud to the prisoner, is there? Yes, there is. I've never heard of it. Okay, what are we waiting for? Boys, we've beaten around the bush with us long enough. Now it's our turn to do a bit of beating. Oh, well, well, what y'all getting at? We're going to get at you, sonny boy. Huh? Yeah, we tried to be nice to him, but we don't seem to understand that sort of thing. Oh, Hartley, get that rope out that's under the front seat. Rope? Yeah. Uh, what, what y'all messing around with rope? Oh, uh, this is going to hurt us more than it does him. Oh, I can't help it if my memory won't fumigate. Uh, I honestly can't. If you don't make him, that's where they went last night. Yeah, yeah. tell us where he put the money he stole. Oh, I didn't steal no money. I just couldn't do nothing like that. I was a good boy. All right. You're a good boy. Are you a good runner? I was a very good... Uh-huh. Uh, is, is, uh, is that a good boy? I, I was good. What you mean? Did you notice how fast this car could go? Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you think you could run that fast? Y'all mean that fast with my own feet and legs? You can try it on your hands if you want to. No, sir. I couldn't do that no matter how scared I was. Well, that's too bad, Wes. Too bad. Because you know what we're going to do? No, sir. 
I tie this rope around your waist. Then we're going to tie the end of the rope to the back of the car and start moving that. That's just what they're going to do. Wait, oh, oh, Lord, y'all can't do nothing like that now. Not if you tell us where that money is. We'll get it sooner or later, anyhow. But we'll get it tonight or else. I didn't steal that money. I didn't steal nothing. My man and Pappy teach me not to see. And if there's anything left of you after we get done leading you around where all your friends can see you, we'll take you up to a nice, spooky graveyard and tie you to a gravestone. And at 12 o'clock, the ghosts come out of the grave. And what they do to a colored boy that can't run is nobody's business. Oh, no, Lord. Is that Daniel from the lion den, the Hebrew children from the fire furnace? You gotta get me out of this, man. Seven, nine, ten. Ten hundred dollars? No, just ten single dollars. 
And a little bit here in this here pocket. Yeah, let me count this. Maybe I'll be lucky. 10, 15, 20. And a little bit in this here pocket. Let me try my luck. Maybe I'll hit the jackpot. 10, 12, 14, 15. That makes $45 altogether. At this rate, we'll be here all night if his pockets hold out. The suspense of this thing is driving me nuts. Come on, Wes. Come on. Where's the rest of it? That's all. That's all. The beautiful simplicity of it. Plunge Wait. Maybe if I go through his pockets, we'll have more luck. Oh, still, David. Don't know why we didn't do that before. Oh, $45 wouldn't prove anything. It might be his money. Well, Miss Alvin, I did take one bill out of that there package here. Oh, sister. And I spent five hours for some clothes. But, uh, oh, I'll give that back to you if you want me to. What? You mean to say you're actually admitting that you stole five dollars? Oh, no, sir. I didn't steal nothing, no. Um, and you asked for it. Uh-oh, what's this? A sales receipt for a Durant automobile dated yesterday. Three hundred dollars made out the web. So, you sold an automobile for three hundred dollars yesterday. Yeah, the old car I've been riding around. That explains where he got the forty-five dollars. But he's already admitted he stole the fifty dollar bill from the package. I tell you all, I didn't steal it. In my entire career as a detective, I've never been so completely befuddled. I can't help wanting to believe it. I hey, look, Bud. Why don't you look through my pocket? Then maybe I stole it. <laughs> if I may offer a suggestion. Oh no, you don't, Mister Smith. No, we're mixed up enough as it is without any help along that line from you. Are you sure you're looking all these pockets, bud? Yeah, he's as clean as a whistle. Wait a minute. I could get back. Well, his overalls are clean anyway. No, I mean, I missed this pocket. It's a parking lot ticket. So what? Yeah, but it's dated today. Today? And he sold his car yesterday. Well, what have you got parked in there on this ticket? Uh-huh. You heard me. If you sold your car yesterday, what did you park in this lot today? Oh, let me see. Look, I can't remember exactly. Oh, oh, there goes his memory again. Well, that's a sign we're on the track of something. Yes, I think so. But if West thinks he's going to take us to every auto park in town before he remembers which one, I'm going crazy. Hmm. No chance. The address is on the ticket. That's the first place he's had tonight. Let's go. These gentlemen have overlooked the psychological angle. Maybe we have, Mr. Smith, but you look at the psychology and we'll look for the money. Come, come, Mr. West, and this time we'll lead the way. Yeah, I Are you sure this is the place, Bud? Yeah, this is the place, all right. I knew this would be a blank. We found it so easy. It sure is deserted. Look, West. If you sold your car yesterday, what did you park in here today? I reckon I parked the car in here. You parked the car in here. It isn't here now. Whose car was it? Well, let me see. I can't remember. For crying out loud, will you stop talking like that? Wait a minute. What's that way back there in the corner, bud? I don't know. It's so dark I can't see a thing. Yeah, I think that is a car. Look at the back of the Yeah, it's a car, all right. And it's a brand new one. Sure is new. It looks like a Kaiser. Yep. Kaiser 80. Well, we might as well save that step. Well, it's funny anyone would leave a car like this in here after the lot had closed on the new. See what name it's registered under. Hasn't got a license on it. No license. Hmm. <laughs> you have the same idea I have. Listen, Wes, did you buy an automobile today? Yeah. You did, huh? Well, I'll see you. Why didn't you tell us, though? Y'all didn't ask me. How much does a car like this oh. cost? Well, at a guess, I'd say between... Twenty-three and twenty-four hundred dollars. Hmm. That's it. If it was $2,350, he'd get three hundred for his old rent. That would make it two thousand and fifty. He had almost fifty dollars in his pocket. Making it twenty-one hundred dollars. The exact amount is missing. All right. Now, wait. Look. You admit you bought this car, don't you? Yeah. Well, in the face of this, you certainly aren't going to stick to your story that you didn't steal the money, are you? What do you all mean? Do you still say you didn't steal the money? Yeah. Well, who did steal it then? Nobody didn't steal nothing. Wouldn't do nothing like that, no. For the last time. Now, listen, Wes. We've been nice to you, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, sure. They've let you leave us all around town when we could have put you right in jail and found out these things later. You appreciate that, don't you? Yeah. And all we've done is ask you little bitchy questions. Now, look, if you'll just tell us the truth, we'll try to see that you get off very easily. Won't that be nice? Yeah. Then, if you're telling the truth and you didn't steal it, who did steal it? Who 
was working with you. Who? Oh, are you trying to protect it? Somebody steal it for you? No, it was stolen. Somebody in the bank stole it. You stole it, and you know you did. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. Come on, you stole it, didn't you? Come on, come on. I didn't steal nothing, no how. Once again, the bank trudged to the gruntled detectives, certain they had solved the crime, but quite uncertain about the circumstances surrounding it and the criminal. Well, Mr. Smith, we found your missing $2,100. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Do you uh, have it with you? No, Mr. Smith. We didn't have the keys to it. The keys to it? What do you mean? We mean your $2,100 has been changed into a prize for automobile. Mr. West did it with his magic wand. He must have, because he didn't steal it. He says he did Well, this is terrible, terrible. Yes, yeah. yes, it's awful, isn't it? Why did you steal that money, Wes? I didn't steal no money, no, Mrs. Smith. There you are, Mrs. Smith. A perfect example of a careful caretaker. You see, he was just going to take care of it for you. Gentlemen, I still think you're overlooking the psychological angle of the case. Mm-hmm. Maybe we are overlooking the psychological angle of this case, but we'll save that angle for the judge to look at. The judge? What for y'all talking about a judge? We're talking about the judge. You're going to try to persuade you didn't steal that money. Uh, uh Mrs. Smith, does they all mean they're going to put me in jail? I'm afraid you do, Wes. I'd like to believe you, but the evidence is pretty much against you. Yeah, but what's against me? It looks like you stole that package. Otherwise, how could it have gotten to your house? Oh, I'm just doing my job as janitor and caretaker. Just doing his job as janitor and caretaker. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. What do you mean, Wes? Oh, I always take home the trash and stuff and sweep up the floor. Mrs. Smith, you know that. Yes, I know that, Wes. And when I get the job here, the man, he gave it $15 a week, and what I found. Found? Wait a minute. What's the story? Would it have been possible for that package to be knocked against the wall as the truck was being wheeled into the vault? Quite possible. And would it be possible, as it was knocked off, to have fallen onto the floor? That's the psychological angle, boys. Well, it didn't feel it. No, I didn't feel nothing, no. I was going up and found that package on the floor. And it said, I can keep everything I found on the floor. In just a moment, Captain Smith will conclude our program. In the meantime, friends, whenever you look at the gauges on your instrument panel... Think of Rio Grande's great combination of protection and power. For the safest and surest protection that money can buy for your motor, Rio Lube Motor Oil. For maximum power at minimum cost, Rio Grande Crack, the police car performance gasoline. And now, Captain Smith. West was tried in the Superior Court, but he stuck to his story. The arresting officers felt that they had resorted to methods which, in their opinion, might be construed as intimidating. For that reason, they refused to appear against West. He was found guilty, however, and sentenced to a year in the county jail. Thank you, Captain Smith. What time is police calling all cars, attention all cars, the cancellation broadcast 264 regarding a robbery? Expecting a case sentence to turn in the county jail. That's all. Rose. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsay, giving you good night for Rio Grande. at this time, Rio Grande will present The Case of the Green Sedan. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.